So I'm actually in Scotland right now. Uh, I'm on a small island called Kara, and it's a short ferry ride away from a town called Oban. We're hanging out with uh, two guys that we met, uh, two Scottish guys, they're really cool, uh, named Connor and Jamie. They're two beginner photographers, and I was talking to them a little bit, and it got me thinking about when I was a beginner photographer, and when I really wanted to make that transition from you know being a beginner and learning into making a little bit of money, or even making money as a beginner photographer. The most important thing when you're learning is experience. You have to try to find ways to do as much work as you can, take every opportunity that you possibly can so that you can get better. But that can be really hard when you know, you're know you managing a part-time job or going to school at the same time. There were a few things that I did when I was balancing my university career and working at a restaurant and trying to learn photography and videography all at the same time to make me a little bit of money on the side. So I wanted to share some of those tips with you today because there is a market for your skill set even as a beginner. I I also want to let you guys know to please stick around until the end of the video because I partnered with the guys at Shutout and together we're actually putting together a little photography contest where you guys can actually win cash and it doesn't matter what skill set you're in, you can participate in this contest so stick around and I'm going to talk about that a little later on. And without further ado, here are some of the ways that you guys can make money even as a beginner. actually inside the castle right now which is super cool actually let's get to my first point which is tell people what you do now this is super important for beginners because you need to get comfortable telling people what you do and I firsthand know how awkward it is to talk about yourself I'm actually really bad at it and it still kind of makes me uncomfortable but you need to know what to say and you need to know the language to use and for someone who's a beginner this is great practice for when you become a pro later on and then you'll have that pitch down like the back of your hand you'll know it so well and it won't be awkward anymore People need to know what you do and they need to know that either you're starting out photography or that you are a photographer because otherwise they won't know to hire you. And a lot of times getting jobs is just through word of mouth. To give you guys an idea of what to say, I've jotted down a little pitch or one sentence or two sentences just to give you an idea of what this can sound like for you guys. I've been taking photos for some time now and I'm eager to pursue this as a career and I'm really excited about taking on some more projects that'll help me learn even more. So through that sentence you're being honest about your skill level, you're new, you are learning, but you do have some gear and you have some skills that are valuable to somebody else. So tell people what you do, whether it's someone you met at a coffee shop to your mom's best friend Susan, tell absolutely everyone because this is how you'll get your first few jobs. So I did a ton of different projects at the beginning that were super weird and were all through word of mouth. So one of which, which is actually pretty funny, was my mom's dance teacher. She taught belly dancing. And I made a little promotional video for her. And it was one of my first projects ever. And I thought it was pretty good and it was great practice for me. So it doesn't matter what it is, just get the experience. And the way you're gonna get the experience is by telling people what you do. <laughs> Which is an island like close to open to Glasgow really quickly for you guys but basically we got really close to missing our ferry and had to book it there and I didn't have time to shoot anything else so we took a train into Glasgow today and we're just exploring the city so right after you tell someone what you do tell them what kind of content would work best for them and what you can do with your skill level so for that real estate agent you could say something like hey well have you thought of getting new headshots and for the dance teacher you could say something like well have you thought of making a promotional video because that's something that I could do and it's a great idea to have that promotional video online because people like to see what you know for the real estate agent who they're working with and for the dance teacher they'd like to see what your dance classes look like and that might make them more likely to actually show up to one of the classes so it can actually get them more work because of this so it's important to explain what the type of content is but it's also equally as important to explain why they would need that type of content just explain what you do be nice about it be honest but just remember not to be too pushy and I promise these two things will really help you get some of your first jobs. Okay, straight up hijacking Lizzie's video for 
for a second here because I'm going to tell you one of the points. So one of the big ones that I've been focusing on the last little while is stock videography and photography. And this is a great way to actually make a little bit of income at the beginning because you can basically shoot anything and you can make money off of it. Now obviously certain clips are going to sell better than others so I would focus on industry, medical, travel, drone, whatever you can get your hands on that's actually good, most likely that will sell better. So go out there, get some different stock videography assets, whether it's shooting on your cell phone or shooting on an HD camera because a 1080p clip or basic HD clip will make you money, whether it's a dollar, two dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, you're gonna start making money just by shooting what you might already have or going out and just shooting stuff with your friends or on your next trip. So talk about friendly people. Our friend Shemaid, her uncle lives here and he drives the coolest black taxi cab ever. Look how cool this car is. Pat's being super generous. He's giving us our own private tour of the city. Thanks, Pat. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> is to join different Facebook groups in your community that are related to events or just photography and videography. You guys ask me all the time how you can get jobs while you're in school. This is a great way. There are tons of Facebook groups organized to find you guys not only jobs, but there are event groups that you can join in on and they'll post often looking for photographers or videographers for certain events. And the best part is you don't actually need a ton of experience to get some of these jobs. Uh, a personal story of mine is when I was in school, I'd only had my camera for a couple months. It was a Canon T3i, by the way. In one of those Facebook Ryerson groups, they posted, hey, need a photographer for a talent show. And there's a small honorarium of $100. So I submitted my very small portfolio at the time and they accepted me. So not only was that great event experience for me, I got more photos for my portfolio and I got a little bit of money too. And for those of you who aren't going to school right now, there are still other Facebook groups that would be perfect to join. So you can look up anything from photography or video photography or uh, producing or film production and you can find tons of these groups right within your community and they're posting all the time looking for volunteers looking for PAs looking for any small jobs and little help on set so that's great for experience and you might get a little money so just reach out to the Facebook groups in your community and I promise that will help you get work in the future Okay, so fun fact, I'm actually in one of the locations that they used to shoot Harry Potter, which is pretty awesome. I'm a huge Harry Potter nerd. Uh, anyways, the next thing I wanna talk to you guys about is honorariums. So if you don't know what an honorarium is, it's basically a small sum of money awarded to someone who's providing a particular service. So an honorarium is something you can ask for when you're doing one of your first jobs ever, uh, because it's always a small amount. Usually it's like 50 to $100, but honestly they can range. It's really looked at as kind of a flat fee gifted to you. Clients are usually happy to provide honorariums because they know they're already getting a discount with you. No one would charge 50 or $100 to do that particular work, but you can because you're a beginner and your time is still valuable. So all that honorarium shows you is that your client now values your time and the effort that you're putting into this particular project. So it never hurts to ask for a small honorarium and that way you can make a little money, which is better than making no money at all, right? <laughs> So we're back in the hotel room because classic Scotland, it started raining. So anyways, the last point I wanted to mention is to sign up for a website like Shutout. I'd never actually heard of a site like Shutout before, but I immediately recognized the potential for not just beginners, but also for experienced photographers as well. Essentially, Shutout is a website where you can upload your photos and enter them into different contests. And there's tons of different ones to enter. And the great part about this for beginners is because not only can you gauge how well your photos perform against others, but you can make some money just by uploading photos you already have. There are two ways you can enter these contests. The first way is for free, but you can't win the monetary prize that way. And the second way is only a $2 entry and you can win the grand prize. And the best part is that for every person that enters, the prize gets bigger and bigger. Because I've partnered with Shutout on this video, I'm actually holding my own contest for travel photography. And Shutout is giving you guys a free $2 
$2 entry. So that's $2 USD that you can enter in my contest or any other contest on the website that you'd like. And I really don't know why you wouldn't because it's a free $2 and you can win money. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description and send me your best travel photo, whether it's a landscape or a busker in New Orleans, it really doesn't matter. It's any travel photo that makes you feel something from a new place. So go ahead and submit, it's a free $2. I hope you win. So the contest is starting at a $50 prize right now, but like I said, it goes up every time one of you guys enters. So honestly guys, whether you sign up for my contest or another contest in the future, Shutout is a great way to gauge how your photos perform against others, to get ideas from other photos that perform well, and finally, just to make some money on the side. I honestly wish this was around when I was starting out. <laughs> Those are my tips on how to make money as a beginner photographer and don't forget to enter the travel photography contest. Again, it can be any style of travel photo, landscape, portrait, it just has to be from somewhere else where you don't live and whatever makes you feel something. So to enter that, link is in the description and I will see you guys next time. So right after you tell, blah, 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 blah. And from the top. Way to gauge how your per photos perform against, how your per photos? Oh, I'm sorry, future Lizzie.